Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week. You know it by now, it's the video where we go through all the little blibs and blobs and stories that have knocked around during the week that involve data that we can squeeze into any other video. Let's start up this week with a biggie. It's been a real Synology heavy week in terms of releases and stuff like that. We've got three things to talk about here. First and foremost, the RS422 and NAS Rack Mount 1U system that we talked about about two months ago now is now finally starting to arrive in different places in the world here in the uk as well this is taking advantage of that brand new dual core ryzen as well as that rather unique 10 gb upgrade there on the rear of course i'm looking forward to telling you more about this system hopefully we get one here in the studio to talk more about it uh, but again it's just nice that we're starting to see some of these 22 series devices from earlier this year that we talked about and nas compares starting to finally arrive globally and on that subject <clears throat> There'll probably be a video already out about this dedicated to it, but I did want to touch on that there is also another 4 bay one u rack mount on the way, the RS822 Plus. Again, if you follow the channel or you follow the blog, you probably already know about this, but just in case you missed it, it's another um, ryzen based system. It's using a more familiar build makeup there, that quad core we've seen in the other systems there, 32 gig of ECC um, as a maximum there. It's got a traditional PCIe expandability with a 4 bay. So again, this year, we're more than halfway through 2022, and Synology has really put its, you know, its stall out for business users thus far. We really thought at this time of year, we would have seen a lot more of those two and four prosumer value series maybe trickling down. Hopefully, we're looking at an autumn release in the 23 series, but who knows? And finally... There is that MVR2 bay. The MVR2 bay is slowly starting to appear in different regions there. The DVA1622. And again, we've talked about it before. But we've learned more about its architecture and certainly that it doesn't have a GPU card inside. The whole thing is being done with on board, which is really impressive. Now, again, it only does two tasks, but given the huge price tag and architecture of that DVA3221, knocking around for about two to two and a half grand wherever you are in the world, and this little two bay based on Celeron architecture with embedded graphics, being able to give you some of that AI stuff as well as a visual out, fair play to them. I'm looking forward to seeing just how well this thing can run Surveillance Station 9 and all of its other services. Next up, Anonymous has been at it again, once again continuing their attacks on Russian uh, organizations after you know their feelings on what Russia has done to Ukraine. But again, we're not going to endorse kind of theft or anything here on the channel. But I will say that uh, getting one TB of uh, a top Russian law firm's data and distributing it online is pretty ballsy indeed. Apparently, some of the details with regard to the companies involved here are pretty alluring. And again, there's numerous tweets about it online. And although I'm not going to publish the leaks to where this information is being dispersed, I can't imagine it's entirely hard to find online right now. Again, lots of people are patting Anonymous on the back for this. And, you know, fair play to them. They're sticking by their principles on what they're doing right now. And with all the things happening in the back and forth between Russia and Ukraine right now, and the global eye is all kind of staring at it right now, at least Anonymous, Anonymous there are, you know, putting pen to paper and, you know, putting their mouth, money where their mouth is there. But ultimately, how you feel about this, I think, is going to be a question of who do you call a criminal, who do you call a freedom fighter, who do you call a mercenary. But Again, it's still nice to see that this kind of stuff is still possible and that some of the dodginess that can be going on around the world isn't necessarily completely out of our sight. Next up, going back to Terramaster and TOS5, this is their operating system and browser software that they've been working on, the latest revision now for quite a while. It looks like release is looking pretty darn soon. We've seen numerous updates to the beta and... Uh, Terramaster themselves have already started publishing lots of how-to guides for the new platform, which surely must mean that a full release candidate or RC is on its way. If you head over to their forums, they've got detailed guides and information on all of the new features that they're adding there. And indeed, if you follow this channel, you'll know that early this week I was talking about T-RAID, their own flexible RAID system. It's kind of their answer to, answer to Synology Hybrid RAID. Lots of information on the blog. And of course, we did a full demonstration introducing a mixture of drives into a TerraMaster system with TOS5. Basically, the long story short is that TOS5 looks like it's going to be landing soon. The stability of it, we're hoping, is going to be uh, you know bulletproof there. They don't seem to have rushed it. Um, but still, nonetheless, keep an eye on that forum to see just how people are dealing with and interacting with this software update. 
And finally, a story from over on Tweaktown, but it has been circulated on lots of, lots of places online. Apparently, Microsoft are saying that Edge, the browser, is able to save you significantly more of your memory with all of the multiple tabs that you have running. Now, anyone that's ever used uh, Chrome or even Mozilla for a great deal of time, you know just how much modern web browsers are eating up your memory. Not just the tabs you're not using, just generally loading in everything from ads to background mechanics of a website. It really does consume all the memory there. Case in point, right now I'm running four tabs of Edge right now, and I'm already using, in terms of memory, a little over a gigabyte of memory just on this one application with the tabs that I have open for this news video. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because Microsoft is saying that we're well, saying that they have saved around 273 petabytes of data for people thanks to their feature sleeping tabs which obviously analyzes and then suspends tabs in the background that aren't being accessed over a period of time. Now do bear in mind this is of course separated over a number of tabs. It's not going to save you that much storage but this was over 6 billion tabs um, and it was able to save that much memory. Now there's a little bit more information on how this was actually achieved and the process back and forth in this. Um, and again, I'm sure if you're watching this on your mobile, hop into Chrome, see how many tabs you've got open, and you'll see why this is a problem. But they have kind of backed up their stats um, a little bit there. Again, it is still very much a, them trying to flog uh, Microsoft Edge to us in the same way I'm sure a number of us are still declining my, uh, Windows 11 for now. But still, it's quite interesting to see that you know, this is a current problem that needs to be addressed. And although I'm still not using Edge personally, apart from in these videos for the news videos, um, I do think it's things like this more than their ability to do searches trying to compete with Google on that is what's going to make people make the hop over. But this has been Data News of the Week. We've got some lovely stuff coming next week on the subject of hard drives. We'll be readdressing the subject of Synology hard drives and WD Red 20 TB stuff and more. So stay tuned for that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next time.